Good to see you. Good to see you. I mean, out of all the frontier markets, is Africa, I mean, it's interesting, Mobius says Africa is where China and India were 20 years ago. Is that something you fundamentally agree with? Absolutely. But I think more than that, I think so, so much has happened in the last five to seven years that I think it's probably closer. I would say probably the last 15 years as opposed to 20 years. Right. Um, structurally, I remain incredibly constructive on the Africa story. And I think in, in a way, it's a sort of a, a, a false dichotomy to put Africa as a sort of separate story to what we're seeing in the frontier markets in general. Um, if you look at just the headline growth story, I mean, Africa this, this year will be um, amongst the top three fastest growing regions, um, according to the IMF's uh, most recent forecast for 2013 and 14. But more than that, if you look at uh, developments in risk assessment um, and also in terms of liquidity, I mean, the story is incredibly compelling. Why, why, I mean, if you compare the frontier uh, uh, market, um, the MSCI, MSCI frontier market with emerging market, there's an enormous outperformance on frontier markets. Emerging markets, we know have underperformed, we know a lot of the reasons. We, um, why, why, why are frontier markets in a, in a different space? Well, that's a fantastic question because I think one of the things that people um, do uh, uh, incorrectly is to sort of assume that the correlation between um, developed markets and emerging markets and developed markets and frontier markets would be the same. And actually what you see is that there's a real compelling story for diversification into frontier markets because the correlations are not as aggressive as you would see between EM and DM. A lot of that stems from the integration of trade, foreign direct investment, are much more integrated for the emerging markets, sort of the traditional BRICS, than they are for the, what I would call the, the frontier economies. So what, what is it the frontier economies have? I mean, when, when, when we've been looking at the impact of Fed policy, clearly, though, I mean, we just saw it in Indonesia, you know, if you've got large current account deficits, you're getting, you're getting killed. In frontier markets, are they less, in, do they have lower levels of debt, for example, less reliance on foreign funding? I don't know. Are these is, issues they don't have? Well, that's a massive issue, and I think you're, you're right to stress that there is a delineation between the structural story, which is around capital, labor, long-term productivity gains, which I still remain very constructive yeah. and positive about, um, but also this, we have to uh, uh, take into account the more short-term technical issues that remain. Um, I was at Jackson Hole last week um, at the Federal Reserve meetings, and this is a big issue now. What happens with the tapering, how will not just um, Africa, but the frontier markets and emerging markets in general cope. Um, concerns around capital outflows, um, the depreciation and weakening of many of the currencies, as you've seen, is, which is you know, as much as double digits. Worries about inflation um, are particularly uh, a problem for frontier markets, but also for African economies. We've seen about five um, sovereigns from Africa issue debt in the capital markets over the past 12 in, months. In, in what, in, the key thing is, is in what currency you issue? Well, the they're debt, right? largely issuing in dollars, right? right? And so obviously yeah. they are going to yeah. hurt. And yeah. I think the confluence of a slowdown in China plus the um, concerns around the tapering, which um, are cause, uh, essentially you have a drive in the um, appreciation in the U.S. dollar, are all things that, factors that are going to drive big concerns. And, and in a way, I think it's a good thing. It will separate the, the sort of chap from the corner, if I may use a cliche. Yeah. The, those those are countries that have managed their economies well, um, have great fiscal policy, real credibility, will be able to survive and weather the storm.